something is going on with Richard's right eye. Um, I don't know if he was in a fight because to me, that's what it seems like. And I did hear like fight noise coming from down here either earlier this morning or late last night. Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto, the Lucky Pharaohs. It is mail time and I am here with Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. And Nancy's here. Isn't that nice? Sammy's here in a tunnel. Richard is over there by Boo's room. I shut the door to Boo's room because there will be less growling and hissing. There's quite a bit of growling and hissing in the kitchen a little while ago. Boo's in the kitchen getting some treats with the Lucky Seven. And uh, in order for me to film this, it's just better to shut the door for Boo. Stella and Splash are in the dining room. Sim is on top of the armoire. I don't know where anyone else is. I'm filming this with a phone and I don't have a tripod for it easily accessible. So this is going to be handheld. Right, Ziggy? Ziggy says she's going to help me. She's going to help me. Okay, Ziggy, you help me. Good. It looks like we have a letter here. And this says, Hi, Miss LF. I hope this note finds you and your cats well. I'm writing to share this info. Alley Cat Rescue. I couldn't help but to see that it is right up your alley. I wrote a letter to the Department of Interior as asked in the section call to action in cats. Hopefully it will help. Miss LF, so with any and all info I send you, I am not asking you to donate, just passing on info. Bye for now, from the heart, Craig. Oh, there's some hissing coming out of the dining room and some growling right now. Thank you very much, Craig, for this note. Alley Cat Rescue sounds very familiar to me. I don't know if I've heard of them before or a similarly named organization. And this is Alley Cat Rescue, and Alliance for Cat Protection. They are a national group operating programs that save the lives of thousands of abandoned and community cats each year. That is really awesome. Their dedicated volunteers are out in all types of weather, rain, snow, or heat, feeding colonies of community cats that they have TNR'd. And their adoption center finds homes for hundreds of cats. That is really cool, right, Ziggy? Ziggy says that is awesome because every cat should be as lucky as she is. Right, Ziggy? I wonder who's in the dining room hissing. Okay, Ziggy. Ziggy says, thank you very much, Craig, for being so kind that you want to help the cats. Ziggy really appreciates it, right? Right, Ziggy? Nancy says thank you also. And they, and Richard says this is really good information to pass on. Look at the little kitten photos. Okay, Ziggy. Ziggy's going to lay on this letter. She says, thank you, Craig, for thinking of all of the underprivileged cats of the world. Yeah, she really loves that. And look at that. And then there's two postcards. Aren't those cute little cats? And we have a box here. And this is from C.R. Barboni. Sammy's checking it out. Thank you, CR, for this box of, and there's Ziggy. And it looks like there is a card. It says, to the lady, Boo, Splash, Simba, Stella, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Ziggy, Goldie, Ringo, and little Eva. Sammy's trying to chew on the box. And this card says, happy Valentine's Day. And look at the little kitten on the card. It looks like a mini Stella. A little bit like a mini Nancy. And look at this card. It's one of those pop-up cards. And there are 12 cats. 
It says, someone like you deserves a truly adorable day. That is so cute. My dear lady, the happiest of Valentine's Days to you. The Fab Four and the Lucky Seven Kitten Pack. Even if this is late, it brings all love, light, and joy with it to you and all of the kittens. May all of you enjoy the treats I have sent and look inside the tin with Stella's truck for a few more surprises with warmest wishes always from C.R. Barboni and Tarbell. Thank you so much, C.R., for thinking of all of us. And Sammy and Ziggy have been helping me read that and open this. And here's Nancy. Okay, here's the card. You want to see the want to see a pretty card? It looks like you guys on the card. What do we got here, Ziggy? What do we got here, Ziggy? Let's open this up. Wow. Wow, look at this. We have Blue Wilderness Tasty Toppers Wild Cuts Tasty Salmon Morsels and Savory Gravy. I've actually never seen these before. I really feel like I haven't been in uh, like a pet food store in so long, even though I have. But I usually just kind of go in with blinders on to buy cat litter and, you know, if I need some dry cat food or something and then I leave. So I never really, I haven't been looking around recently. So that is really awesome. Thank you, CR. So there's quite a few of these. These will make a nice snack for the cats or even a, a meal topper. And these will be great for fish day. Oh, and look at what we got. We got a box of delectable squeeze-ups and I am all out of squeeze-ups. I just actually placed an order for some yesterday on Amazon. They're not going to be here until next week. So thank you so much, CR. The cats are really going to enjoy these. What I am trying to do is get them back off of crunchies. They've been getting crunchies almost every night, you know, since holiday time, since around December. And I want to get them back off crunchies um, for the most part. And what I want to do is I want to substitute um, like squeeze ups or chew roos, um or even some different kinds of like wet food or canned food for them. So thank you so much. And look what they got. They got these puree gourmet cat treats made with real salmon. Ziggy says, thank you. You want to hold on to that, Ziggy? Ziggy loves fish. She's like Simba like that where she loves fish. You know, it was tuna that got her into the trap. So there's some salmon. She doesn't want to talk about traps. Oh, and here we have more squeeze-ups, tuna and salmon. Sammy's checking them out now. There's Nancy. Oh, Ziggy just went in the tunnel. And here we have more squeeze-ups, tuna and salmon. This is awesome. And here's more squeeze-ups. So there's four squeeze-ups in one of these packages. And when, you know, you have 11 cats and you want each of them to get one of these a day, that's three packages. Three packages gives all of the cats one each. So thank you so much, CR. Ooh, and look at this. They got meaty sticks. They love meaty sticks. This morning I gave Goldie a meaty stick because I was downstairs. I was in the laundry room and I came out of the laundry room and Goldie was sitting there and I was like, well, what can I give her? And the only thing I had down there was meaty sticks and she really enjoyed it. And then we have some more of these uh, Wild Cuts toppers. That's a lot of goodies, right, Ziggy? Ziggy's really excited to enjoy some of these goodies. She says, thank you very much, CR. She says, give all of her best wishes to Tarbell also. And here's another bag. Ooh, look at that. Look at how sparkly this bag is. Oh, I love that. What do we have in here? We have, we have Belgian seashells, Ziggy, check that out. Unfortunately, you guys can't have any, but I can enjoy those. Thank you very much, CR. And here's a tin with Stella's favorite truck on it. Stella loves trucks. 
CR sent to make sure to open this. Ooh, look what CR sent. CR sent a micro SD card, which is wonderful. Thank you so much, CR. This definitely helps with filming videos for the channel. And we got a Dollar Tree gift card. That is so cool. Thank you very much, CR. And a Petco gift card. That is wonderful. That'll help pay for some cat litter or dry cat food. And a PetSmart gift card. CR is totally spoiling us. And he is spoiling all the cats. And Ziggy says that is okay because she loves it. Right, Ziggy? She said she's very appreciative of all of this. Right? She says she doesn't know how she got so lucky. Right, Ziggy? Ziggy says she is such a lucky girl. And so are all of her brothers and sisters and her entire family, right? And what else do we have in here? Oh, wow, look at this. We have Perugina bittersweet chocolate. I love that. And then we have dark chocolate, 51%. And we have Giardelli Intense Dark, 72% dark chocolate. These are my favorites. I love super dark chocolates. I eat just a little tiny bit of them every day, and I just really enjoy them. Thank you so much, CR. Check this out. I've never seen this before. This is eight individually wrapped bars, dark chocolate and cappuccino flavored filling. That looks really good. And this is Cumberland Farms premium chocolate, rich dark chocolate with pink Himalayan sea salt. Oh, I love that combination. And we have some Andes Cream de Mint Thins. I haven't had these in so long. I'm going to put these in the refrigerator because I remember that I used to like to eat them cold. And another bag. Thank you very much. And another bag. I'm actually going to share some of these with Grandma and Grandpa. Thank you very much, CR. And here we have Godiva Masterpieces Dark Chocolate Ganache Heart. That looks really good. Oh, and look at this one. It says, Happy Valentine's Day. Whitman Solid Milk Chocolate with the little cats on it. That is so cute. Thank you so much, CR, for all of these goodies for the cats and for myself. We are going to enjoy all of these. It was so nice of you to think of us. And we really appreciate your support of this channel and your contributions and all of your participation in the live streams and the comment section. Thank you so much. We hope you are doing well. It is 9.30 a.m. I am here with Boo and Simba and Stella's behind me. And the cats were just brushed and combed. And we're gonna have some play time before I make their breakfast. There's Simba. So yesterday, I went to the supermarket and I bought some boneless chicken breast because in my freezer up here, like the freezer above my refrigerator, I have some organ meats that I have frozen in meal-sized portions and I also have um, some chicken necks, including bones, that I have frozen in meal-sized portions. So all I need to do is cut up some boneless chicken breast and mix it in with the organ meats and the chicken necks and add some supplements and the cats have a complete meal. So that's what they had for dinner yesterday. They're gonna have it for breakfast today. I have to cut up more chicken this morning. And I bought enough for um, like dinner tonight, breakfast tomorrow. And I still have to plug in the freezer and see if it works. Um, but I wanted to rearrange some things in my laundry room where I have the freezer. So it's going to take me a little while to do that. I don't know if I'm going to get to it today. Maybe I'd get to it later today. Here's Stella. She's in the hallway. So the cats had open window time this morning. I had three windows open. It's very cold out and it's supposed to rain later today. So it's going to be like gray and cloudy and gloomy today. So I've started brushing the cats every day because it's shedding season already and I'm also combing them 
just to make sure that there are no fleas, even though I don't think flea season starts quite yet, but I wanna make sure that they get used to the routine of being brushed and then combed. And I brush them until I feel like I'm not really getting any more cat hair off of them. But if I comb them afterwards, I still get more cat hair off of them. So it's kind of deceiving. Hello, Stella. Simba's down the hall. You see him back there? Simba, you want to play ball? Stella, your tail's in the way. It's about 10 a.m., I think, and I'm downstairs with the Lucky 7, and they get brushed and combed also. It's a little bit more challenging with them because, um, you know, they move around a lot, and there's more of them. Sammy's right next to me. Okay, here you go, Ziggy. Come on. Must be brushed. And something that I've noticed is they've kind of been a little bit more afraid of me since I was away for like a day and a half. Which is, you know, weird for cats. But Simba used to hold a grudge when I used to go away on like an overnight or weekend trip. And Splash would be afraid of me. So it's just something that they... They need to get used to. Here you go. Hello, Ziggy. Ziggy loves being brushed. Another thing that I did different last night was I turned the router off. So I have like a, uh, like a utility closet down here. And that's where I have like the circuit breaker and that's where the router is. And that's where like all of the wires come into the home, like um, for like broadband and everything. So I wanted to see what would happen if I turned it off at night. So before I went to bed, I turned it off. And then this morning I turned it back on and it was really peaceful. You don't realize how much kind of... Um, I don't know, let's call it like electronic pollution, EMF pollution, a router puts off, especially when you have it hooked up to, you know, TVs and mobile devices and computers and stuff like that. So um, what that changed was last night, um, these cats couldn't have the TV on because, you know, I have TV through broadband um, through Verizon Fios. So with the router off, it meant that there was no TV access, which was fine. So, um, it was kind of quiet down here for them. And then this morning when I woke up, 
I came down here and I plugged it back in. So that way everything will be fully functioning for the work day. And I'm going to try it again tonight. I am going to turn the router off again at night and we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it is going to become like an everyday occurrence or just an occasional break. Some people are more sensitive to it than others. So I wanted to give it a try and see how it felt. Sammy, get your nose out of her butt. Sammy, get your nose out of her butt. You don't, your nose does not need to be in Nancy's butt. So I just remembered that yesterday I put the cat beds in the washer and the dryer. So I need to go get them out of the dryer, see if they're dry. Here are the cat beds. They are all nice and clean again.
It's 2.40 p.m. and here's Boo. He has some white fur on him. Here's Stella. Here's Splash and Simba. And now I'm seeing some blood on this vomit blanket. So I don't know what just happened, but I'm assuming one of the lucky seven just tried to jump on the bed with Stella and Boo here. I don't know. I have to look at the security camera footage, but I did hear what sounded like a cat fight, and then I immediately ran into the room. It appears that it was Richard. It might have been Ringo, but I think it was Richard. I might have to look at the video on a larger screen. I just looked on my phone. And what happened was Boo was here, Stella was there, and then it appeared like Richard just popped up here, jumped on the bed and started scratching at Boo, and Boo started scratching at him, and it was like like a fist fight for cats. There's no biting involved. Um, they were just like scratching at each other and then uh, Richard uh, ended up here next to Stella and then eventually uh, left the room. So I'm just going to check on Boo, uh, make sure there's no uh, blood on him and then I'll go check on Richard and Ringo. I just wiped Boo down and it appears the blood is coming from his mouth. So I don't know if it's coming from a loose tooth like his loose fang um, or what. So we're just gonna keep him under observation. He did not have any blood this morning when he was eating breakfast or anything, so I don't know if he got hit in the mouth. I don't know if he got scratched. We're just gonna have to keep an eye on things. It is 2.57 p.m. and I've confirmed that it was Richard because Richard was underneath the bed and I chased him out from under the bed and then he was running around the house like he was very guilty, like he thought I was going to come after him. So I kept following him around, and then I shut the door to downstairs, and he got very upset. So I followed him around the house to see what he was going to do, and then he started howling. It's the same kind of howl that you hear when you're taking a cat to the vet. It was that howl, and he just started howling and howling and howling. But I just kept following him around the house. He was running around like a frantic a lunatic. And eventually I opened the door to downstairs and he flew downstairs. So that's where the cats are right now. And I want to put him into like a timeout, but I mean, that's the best timeout that there's going to be right now is just keeping the door to downstairs shut. And I think he knows he did wrong because that's why he was so afraid of me following him around the house. And... That's all I had to do. I just had to like walk around to where he was and then he would just like run in the opposite direction. And when I shut the doors so he couldn't go in the bedrooms, he couldn't go downstairs, then the house becomes like a circle and he was just going around in circles. And that's when he realized there was no way out. He's just started howling and howling and howling. So then finally I just opened the door to downstairs because I don't want really to upset Boo or any of the other cats. So that's the situation right now. Boo's mouth is not dripping blood right now, so it could just be that it came from his loose tooth. And I'm just going to keep an eye on him. Today is Thursday, which, you know, is not the best day of the week for this to happen. Not like there's a good day of the week for it to happen. But if it was like a Monday or a Tuesday, then we'd have uh, more um, vet days ahead of us. So, like, the vet that Boo goes to for his mouth is open Monday through Fridays. So, um... I'm just going to keep a good eye on him for the next 24 hours or so and see what happens. Hopefully everything's fine and it's just, you know, part of his loose tooth. It's 3.14 p.m. and I'm going to give the OG4 a chew right now. They've been getting these at night. I'm going to give them one now. I just want to see how Boo's mouth is doing. Boo, do you want to pick a flavor? What flavor? Want a flavor? Would you like one? Blue? Red? Green? 
Which one? This one? Green? Red? This? You don't want one? Do you want one or no? You want the green one? We just ate this churu, and I'm not seeing like blood or anything, so I am still thinking the blood is from his potentially loose tooth, but it's a good sign. I definitely need to put all these blankets in the wash, but I'm not going to disrupt the cats. I'll wait until later. It's 5.15 p.m., and I wanted to show you what was going on down here. There were three cats laying in this bed together. Nancy, Ringo, and Ziggy. So potentially mommy, daddy, and their baby Ziggy. Right, Ziggy? So Ringo and Ziggy are still in the bed. And it was so cute. But of course, the minute I turn the camera on, Nancy has to get up. Look how cute they are. Ziggy looks so comfortable. Hello, Nancy. It's 3.45 p.m. Look at what's going on here. Look, look. Look, that's Nancy. Nancy was laying on the bed with Boo and Stella. I was just walking by the room to see what was going on, and yeah, Nancy's on the bed. Boo's drooling a little bit. I have to see what's going on with his mouth. I wiped Boo's mouth. I don't see any blood today. It's just some drool. And it's coming from the fang that he has loose. And that's what his other fang did shortly before it eventually came out. I want to say within a few weeks of the other one coming out, um, it was drooling. It could be because Boo was sleeping. Um, you know, sometimes cats drool when they sleep. He's licking some drool off of his paw right now. So he's under observation. We're going to see how everything goes with him. Here's Stella. She's doing good. There's Simba. Hey, Simba. Simba looks like he's been sleeping. I should also mention that I watched Boo eat dinner yesterday and some snacks last night and breakfast this morning and there's been no other blood. So that's been good. It seems that it was a result of him getting hit in the face from Richard. And like I mentioned, if his tooth was a little bit loose and he got hit and it caused it to loosen up more. That is what could have caused some bleeding and that could be why it's drooling a bit today because as we know, when cats have an issue with their teeth or their mouth, um, they can drool from that. And it's very similar to what happened with his other fang. So he's still under observation. Um, tomorrow's the weekend and our vet's closed for two days. So hopefully everything will just remain stable for several days. Look at what's going on in here. So I think that is Nancy and Richard by the window. Sammy was there with them. There's Ringo. I don't know if Ringo... Oh, Ringo's going underneath the day sofa. I left this window open a little bit for them this afternoon, and they've been enjoying smelling the air. It is March 1st. And I'm downstairs with the Lucky Seven, and we've been playing with this wand toy because I'm just about to feed them their dinner, and I just saw something. And I'm going to document it. Can you see what's going on right here? There's an ant. That is the first ant of the season. And it's only March 1st. So... Not happy about that, but that means I can't keep 
a bunch of dry food out for the cats in like the crunchy tree or the crunchy digger, like the cat it tree and the cat it digger. Or there's one, there is soon to be more. I should also mention that today we had very heavy rains all day. Like I went out for a while to run some errands. There's Ziggy. And the rain was so bad, like you could hardly even see where you were driving. It was just a sheet of gray everywhere. So when it rains during ant season, um, that is an issue that I've noticed that usually when it rains, it drives ants out from wherever they've been living. So, oh yeah, yeah. There's Goldie. I'm not really ready to start battling ants. It's been so nice not to have to deal with bugs, but I guess that time is uh, upon us. I think that's Ringo laying in the royal cat bed because Richard's been walking around. Unless it's Richard, unless Richard jumped up there. There's Eva, Richard. Yep, I told you, Richard's been walking around, so that's Ringo up there. It's 10.30 a.m. and the cats are eating their breakfast. I just made them about four days worth of meals because with the broken freezer, I have to do things a little bit differently right now since I only have the freezer above my refrigerator and I you know, can't fit too much food in there for 11 cats, um, but I was easily able to fit food in there for four days worth of meals. Um, so that's eight meals. I'll probably be able to extend this to five days worth of meals because I did buy some extra organ meats and uh, chicken necks, which I have freezing in separate meal size portions. I have two meals extra on the organ meats and four meals extra on the chicken necks. And when I was in Trader Joe's yesterday, I bought some cans of their no salt sardines and also their no salt tuna. So when I made homemade tuna for the cats with the organ meats and the chicken necks, they really liked it. So we're going to have that one day and I'll probably pick up um, some other kind of meat, maybe some beef, which I'll chunk up for them. I don't know why Splash is not eating. Um, so when I went to the farm yesterday, I bought four pounds of their ground uh, dark meat chicken and four pounds of their ground dark meat turkey. The reason why I did that was to just save me some time with having to grind it. Although, to be honest, I don't know how much time that saved me because I had to take the grinder out anyway to grind up the chicken necks and the organ meats. And I don't know why Boo's moving away from his plate right now either. Um, so I just quickly put everything together today. And yeah, as, I, as I'm talking about this right now, that was actually kind of dumb to buy the pre-ground meat because it's more expensive and the cats like it better when I just grind my own meat. So when making homemade cat food, it's always advisable not to buy pre-ground meat because it does contain higher levels of bacteria just because it's already ground. But considering the fact that I was buying it directly from the farm, I figured it could not be any fresher than it was. So that's why I was like, I'll just buy it pre-ground. But considering the fact that I had to take the grinder out to grind the chicken necks, it really wasn't worth it. So... Looks like Simba ate most of his. Stella's working on hers. I'll put a few more toppers on Boo's and Splash's and maybe they'll continue eating it. It's 10.45 a.m. I just came downstairs a few minutes ago and I'm getting breakfast ready for the Lucky 7. Something is going on with Richard's right eye. Um, I don't know if he was in a fight because to me that's what it seems like. And I did hear like fight noise coming from down here either earlier this morning or late last night, but uh, I don't know what happened. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, so he does have the eye open. It is very teary, and like I could see his, his third eyelid, which means there's definitely something going on. Um, it doesn't look swollen, so I don't think it's an eye infection, 
I think it might be just a little bit of an injury because at times um, it does look normal, but then at other times it doesn't. So what I have here is an immunity support tablet. Here you go. Here you go, Richard. Hopefully he'll just eat it. The other thing that I notice is that his pupils look a little bit different. Okay, if he doesn't eat it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush it up and put it in his food. This is the standard process feline immune system supplement um, that Boo was given from the vet. And Boo has not been getting this on a daily basis. I should be putting it back in his food, but with all the uh, upheaval with the freezer and everything, I haven't been doing that. But I'm going to crush this up. I'm going to put this in Richard's food. Hopefully he'll eat it. If one of the other cats eat it, it's fine. This is just to help boost his immune system. I just crushed it up in my mini mortar and pestle and I mixed it into a green churu, usually because the cats tend to like green chewers. Here, Richard, can you eat that please? Let's see if he'll eat it. Hopefully he'll eat it. This is the problem, keeping other people from eating it. Here you go. It's for you, Richard. It's special for you. Okay, you don't want it? Why don't you want it? I just sprinkled some freeze-dried chicken on top. We'll see if he eats it now. Here you go, Richard. Here. Richard, Here, eat that. Eat that, sweetie. I'm holding Nancy back. Let Richard eat it. It's for Richard, not for Sammy. Sammy, come here. Eat it, Richard. Okay, eat it. It's for Richard. Here you go. Eat that. Eat that, buddy. You eat it, Richard. Eat it, Richard. This is for Richard. Here you go. Eat that, buddy. Eat it, Richard. Okay, I knew this was not going to work. But he's stretching, so he's happy. Move over. Here. Eat that. I just stuck it on his food, so hopefully he'll eat it this way once everyone else is distracted with their own food. Everyone's eating, and I just gave Richard his food over here because this is where he is. So hopefully he will eat the part with the supplement in it. He might just eat around it. It's good that he has an appetite and he wants to eat. So we'll see what happens. He's now officially under observation. The time that Stella had an eye injury um, from being in a fight with one of the other cats. I brought her to the emergency animal hospital and they looked at her and they gave me like the teramycin ointment to put on her eye, which she didn't really let me put on her eye. And they put a cone on her head and she left there with the cone on her head. She came home with the cone and I thought she was going to hurt herself or have a heart attack. That's how bad it was. So I took the cone off of her and I just kept her under observation and she healed. And that might be what's going on here because I can't think of anything else that would be causing this. I remember hearing like a fight sound. I will check the security camera footage to see if it shows anything. But... Like in the past when Ditto had an eye infection, like he was living outside and he had compromised immunity and, you know, just living outside could have caused that. His also could have been caused from a fight. And I did give Ditto some extra herbal supplements at the time to boost his immune system. So it's kind of similar to the supplement I just gave Richard. I will look to see if I have any of the other um, herbal tinctures that I used on Ditto. I don't know if I do because that was a few years ago. That was two years ago at this point.
a little bit more than two years actually because it was when Ditto was still outside. It was two years ago this month that Ditto passed away. Now that I think about it, because that was 2022. And if I look at Richard's face, his face does not look swollen. A lot of times if a cat has an eye infection, um, the face will be swollen around the eye and I don't see that. And I don't see a lot of pus oozing out of his eye either. It is teary. But, like, there's no, like, white pus coming out of it or yellow pus coming out of it. So that's why I honestly think it's an abrasion from a fight. So that's why we're going to keep him under control. If it gets worse, then I'll definitely call the vet tomorrow. But it could just be something like what Stella had, and it just needs time to heal on its own. And it looks like he ate the supplement, which is good. I'll see about giving him some more later today. So I want today to be a, a day of rest for the cats. I also should mention that the past few nights I've been turning the TV off at night and that could be why they got into a fight because I had noticed prior that if I kept the TV on at night they behave better and if I shut the TV off then they would get themselves into mischief so I'm definitely going to be leaving the TV on tonight and um, the next few nights look he ate really good he has a good appetite he ate his food He's getting the supplement in, so that's really good. Good job, Richard. I want you to rest and rest your eye, okay? So I just got a look at his eye, and the pupil of the eye with the issue is definitely smaller than the pupil of his other eye. And to me, it looks like there's a little bit of blood um, on the iris. So that's why I'm thinking it's... Um, a wound issue but again we're, we're just gonna see how it goes and then if I need to call the vet tomorrow I will I opened up a can of salmon friskies for the cats come here Nancy and I split it five ways because five cats were interested in eating a little bit more food Ringo and Sammy are not and then I put some supplements in there for Richard I put some omega-3 um, fish oil in there, which is anti-inflammatory. I put some turmeric in there, which is also anti-inflammatory. And then I found the immunity tincture that I had used um, with Ditto and Boo in the past. Um, it's from NHV Pet Products. It's called Felim. And I put a little bit of that in there. And he didn't want to eat it, so then I put a little bit of a churu on top of it. He still didn't want to eat it, so then I sprinkled it with a little bit of Fortiflora. And then he um, gave it a try. So we'll see how much of it he eats. The supplements are mixed into the Friskies portion of it, not just the toppers. It is um, interesting to me how like the other cats are concerned with his well-being, especially Nancy. And Richard was hiding from me, like underneath Boo's old daybed. You know, he's doing that thing that cats do when they're not feeling well. I would like all of these cats just to stay down here today. I think that would be the best thing in case Richard does have something that might be contagious. Although, I don't know where he would get it from. Once he's done, I'm going to turn their toys on. But I know that he and Nancy are going to be the first two that want to go upstairs. I will open the back door so that they can look out of the back door. But he seems to be doing a good job eating. And at one point, um, right before I gave him this, um, he looked up at me and his eye looked almost completely normal. 
So it's something that's definitely, um, it's definitely like transient. Like sometimes I look at him and he's keeping his eyes shut. Other times I look at him and his eye looks almost normal. Hopefully it's not something like pink eye, which could spread. I can't remember if it was last summer or the summer before when I had pink eye. I had pink eye like twice and it was just really weird. It was like out of nowhere and it was annoying. The other thing I should mention is that his eye is not tearing that much. It's tearing a little bit. But I would think if something was like stuck in his eye, his eye would be tearing more than it is. Okay, so I'm going to put the toys on, open the back door, and hopefully they'll just relax down here today. This is little Eva's favorite new game. This is a 3D gecko video. She goes crazy over this video. It's 11.37, Nancy was upstairs. She was the only cat upstairs because Sammy went back downstairs. And then she was crying at the door. And of course, Richard's crying at the door. I don't know if you could see him, but he's right here. And I want him to just relax today. Can you guys go downstairs and relax, please? Can you just go down and relax, Richard? Okay, Richard, just, just relax, honey, okay? Go relax, I want you to heal your eye, okay? What I'm doing in the kitchen right now is cleaning up um, from making homemade food this morning. I'm washing the meat grinder and I'm also trying to make myself some breakfast. Once I do that, my plan for the day is to come back downstairs because I need to clean out the laundry room. I want to rearrange a few things in it and I want to get rid of the broken freezer because I need to make room for the new freezer, which hopefully should be here in a few days. So I want everyone to stay downstairs and it's only gonna take me a few more minutes to get that done. I don't know if you could see Richard, but he's kind of you know, closing that eye and then opening it, closing it and opening it. So, I mean, it's good that he doesn't keep it closed all the time, which means it's not too bad because with Stella's eye, she kept it closed all the time. But I just don't wanna take any chances with it. Can you guys come downstairs and relax? Come on, I'll put your toys on, come downstairs. I just put all the lights on down here. I usually only keep like one set of lights on. Now there's five sets of lights on. So it's nice and bright down here and hopefully the cats will just hang out. I put the toys on, I'll put this other toy on. I put the fling a string toy on because this is something that they just get when I need to distract them. So hopefully it'll work. It's 12.15 and Richard was crying at the door for Nancy again so I just grab my stuff and I'm like okay let's go downstairs she's still upstairs so I know I'm gonna have to open the door for her again but I'm ready to get started down here all the cats are down here except for Nancy and the OG4 it's 12 30 p.m. and I just came outside to water the plants in the greenhouse and to check on them and it is 62 degrees out. It is so beautiful. All I want to do is be outside today, but I have to clean out the laundry room downstairs. And look what I noticed here. Look at this. So somebody has been accessing this shelter because I want to say as of last night, um, I took some garbage out very late last night and this was not like that. So I don't know if a cat did this. I don't know if it was a possum or what. I'm gonna see if the security camera caught anything. Um, I just wanted to document that. It feels like spring today. It is so beautiful. I am gonna work as fast as I can in that laundry room to try to get outside. And it looks like some of the hyacinths or the daffodils are starting to peek out of the ground. Here's Ziggy. I was thinking of rearranging my schedule and actually spending the day outside because it's going to be 65 today and it's going to be like the rare warm day for several weeks. I looked at the um, 
I looked at the forecast and the highest we're going to get is mid 50s and with lots of rain. So I definitely want to spend some time outside today. And I was thinking, well, maybe I'll take the litter boxes outside and scrub them. But it has, but it's only been a few weeks since the last time I did that. So it's too early and I really do need to get the laundry room done because if I don't do it today, I'm really not going to have enough time to do it during the week. So I think this is going to give me good motivation to move as fast as possible. Right, Ziggy? It's 8.45 p.m. I'm downstairs with the cats. And Nancy and Ziggy are hunting a spider. I think Nancy's trying to eat it. I'd like to kill it. We don't like bugs in the house. I don't know what kind of spider it is. There it is, there it goes. Let's, let's squash it. Okay, I had a damp paper towel in my hand. Some people say it's cruel. <laughs> Some people don't like squashing spiders. And I can say you could do whatever you want in your house, but in my house, if we see spiders, we squash them. It's 11.30 p.m. and here's Stella. And I'm just about to get ready for bed, but I wanted to mention what's going on with Richard. Here's Boo. Hello, Boo. So Richard spent the day relaxing on a chair downstairs He's been napping on the chair and I've just been leaving him alone. Like, I don't want to disturb him. I just want him to rest and relax and hopefully his eye will start to heal. So when I gave the Lucky Seven their dinner, he did not come out to eat dinner. So I put his dinner aside for him and I did crush up um, a supplement into his dinner. It's the standard process feline whole body support. Um, so it's a different one than he had for breakfast and I put that in his food for him and I put his food aside for him because I figured he might want to eat it later and sure enough that's what happened so I've been kind of putting some winter stuff away today and uh, taking out some spring decorations and going in and out of my storage room downstairs and as I've been doing that I've just been trying to uh, see what's going on with him on the chair and his eye does not look worse than this morning. I think it looks a little bit better than this morning. I don't want to jinx anything. To me, it looks like he's holding it open more, um, like he was squinting and closing it more this morning. Um, it's still a little bit teary. It's still red. But he seems to be keeping it open more, which potentially is a good thing. I don't even know if you could see Boo because it's kind of dark in here right now. So I gave him some food underneath the daybed down there and I think he ate it. I mean, maybe someone else ate it, uh, but most of it was gone when I went back down the second time. Um, so what I did was I opened a can of food and I split it among everyone's plates down there. Then I gave them all some of the Zeewee Peak um, dry cat food. I figured if anyone wants to eat it, they can eat it. And you know, if he wanted to eat it, he could. If he doesn't want to eat it, that's fine. He ate a big breakfast today. Um, I left the TV on for them tonight, and hopefully everyone will behave, and I just want him to get some more good rest. But he did come out, and, he, you know, he is, like, interacting with the other cats more uh, now than earlier. So I want to take that as a good sign, but we're not going to really know until tomorrow and see how things go overnight. But that's what's going on with Richard. I didn't want to stick a camera in his face. I didn't want to make him more nervous or uncomfortable than he already is because I could tell he's definitely out of sorts. His eye is bothering him. He was not his usual self today. Um, so I just don't want to you know, I don't want to scare him, make him run around or anything. I just want him to chill out. That's why I didn't film anything. And here's Simba. And the cats had some churros a little while ago. I'm just about to give them a few of the Blue Wilderness cat treats. And then I am calling it a night. It's 8.40 a.m. I just came downstairs to see what's going on. And there's Richard. There's Richard right here. He was looking out of a window so he he climbed up into a window and look at him look his eye is 
I would say like 99% back to normal. It's completely different than it was yesterday. Richard, how are you? Okay, it's still, let's, let's take that back to about 90. We'll say it's 90% back to normal. I'm not going to say 99 because the pupil is a little bit different than the other pupil. So we're going to say 90% back to normal. But it is a massive improvement from yesterday. Yesterday it was like all teary and red and just really bad. And today it's not. And like he's not even shutting it. Hey, Richard. Yesterday he was trying to keep it shut all the time. So this is a very, very big improvement for him. He's still under observation. He's not out of the woods yet. And hopefully... He'll continue to get better, but the eye looks a lot better than it did yesterday. Right, Sammy? And Richard seems to be in much better spirits today. Let me show you what I used on him yesterday to help his body heal itself. And this is also um, to document it for me so I could go back and refer to what I used. Uh, this is standard process veterinary formulas, feline immune system support. And I got this from a holistic vet for Boo. And unfortunately, we can't look at the ingredients on the back because it has a prescription sticker over them. Um, but this is what I used in his food um, for breakfast. I also used this turmeric tincture from NHV Pet Products. This is basically just turmeric. I used this Felim Herbal Tincture from NHV Pet Products. And this helps to boost a cat's immunity. It has St. John's wort in it, turmeric, aloe vera juice, alfalfa leaf, burdock root, cat's claw bark. Osha root, dandelion root, go to cola herb, usnea herb, myrrh, and golden seal. Now, some people might see aloe vera juice in there and freak out because, well, cats are not supposed to chew on an aloe vera plant. Um, this company is not going to put anything bad in their products for cats. So, um, whatever they put in here definitely has therapeutic uses. And I've used this on Ditto in the past when he had eye infections and it helped uh, his body heal itself. And I'm hoping that this helped with Richard yesterday. I'm sure resting also helped a lot. And then this is the Nordic Naturals Omega-3 Cat Pure Fish Oil for Cats. I put some of this in his food for breakfast. And for dinner, I used the Standard Process Veterinary Formulas Feline Whole Body Support. Also, I should mention that he had homemade raw food for breakfast. He also had homemade raw food for dinner, and I did put extra vitamin C in the food. This is the vitamin C that I put in the cat food. It's Solaray Buffered Vitamin C Powder, 5,000 milligrams. I usually put half a teaspoon of this into one and a half pounds of meat. Um, so that's what I did when I made dinner yesterday. I put this in everyone's meal. Um, so I just put it in like the bulk batch before I portion it out for the cats. And this can really help with healing also. It is 9.07 a.m. I put the toys on for the cats. They have a mouse video on the TV. And they want to sit here and stare at me. Look at Bowie sitting in the chair. Uh, because I'm making myself breakfast. After I eat and take care of myself, then they're going to get brushed and combed. And then they're going to eat. Because I have found that if I do it the opposite way, then the entire morning can go by without me taking care of myself and without me eating breakfast, right, Boo? Okay, so I eat first, then you guys eat. Right, Stella? You guys have your toys on, you have videos on, you could go play, you don't have to sit here and stare at me. It is 10 a.m. And I just came downstairs with food for the cats. I forgot the camera, which is why I went back upstairs. That's Richard. So he was on the steps waiting to eat, and he's right in the middle of the action. He's keeping his eye open. Um, it does look a little bit different than the other eye, so that's why it's not 100% back to normal. I'm going to say maybe 90% back to normal. Um, the pupil is still a little bit smaller than the other pupil, and he's blinking it more, so... It could be that there's still a scrape. It could be that it got scraped or hit or something. So he's looking a lot better than he did yesterday. See him there? So he's looking almost back to normal. So I'm going to brush the cats, comb the cats, give them their breakfast, 
and I'll put the supplements in Richard's again. Hopefully he'll continue to eat them. So today Richard is letting me brush him and he's even purring. Oh, and he's stretching. Good job, Richard. He's definitely feeling better than he did yesterday. Okay, good job, Richie. Hello, Ziggy. So I did something interesting with um, the OG4 today when they had their breakfast. Here's Sammy. Come on, Sammy, you gonna get brushed? Come on down. And that is, I sat down with them. Usually I just give them their food and like I'll watch them or um, I'll just clean up or just go about my day. Sometimes, you know, I've given them their food and I've just, you know, hung out with them while they've eaten. But I actually just sat down with them on the floor and it was very relaxing. Everyone is eating their breakfast. Here's Ziggy, Sammy, Goldie, Richard, Nancy, and then Ringo and Eva are over there. And I don't want to jinx anything, but Richard's eating his food. And he has all the supplements in it. I also added in a little bit of Fortiflora just to try to disguise the supplements in case he was going to taste those. I don't use like a whole package of Fortiflora. I open a package and then I just like dust it on like you would dust seasoning onto food like if you're going to add like a sprinkle of seasoning or something that's how I use it for the cats when I use it as kind of like a flavor enhancer or appetite stimulant and I put it on his food yesterday and I got him to eat it so that's why I put it on today I just want him to be hungry enough to really eat the food well I also did not give the cats crunchies last night they had a little bit of the ziwi peak on a little bit of canned cat food at night but I'm trying to keep them hungry so that, you know, he wants to eat the food with the supplements in it. Also, the cats upstairs did not have crunchies last night. They had um, churus, and I forgot to give them their other treats because I got involved with doing some other organizing and rearranging upstairs. So they were very hungry for their breakfast. We'll see how well they ate when I go upstairs. I don't want Nancy to disturb him. So none of the other cats have any signs of eye irritations. So I don't think Richard has pink eye. I just wanted to make sure yesterday in case he did, in case it was contagious, that all the cats were down here. And, you know, if anything spread, um, I would know and it would be contained down here before potentially spreading it to anyone upstairs. So the fact that nobody else has any eye issues to me indicates that um, it was some kind of abrasion and some kind of injury to Richard's eye. That would make more sense. Oh, and I just forgot. I forgot. Well, I don't want to do it now. I was going to sit down with the cats. But I don't want to disturb anyone. So I'm just going to continue standing here. I just want to tread lightly until Richard eats all of his food. Goldie's done already. Nancy likes to go back to her food. That's one thing that I've noticed with her. She likes to leave it there. If anyone else wants it and then after everyone else is done she likes to come back and kind of finish it Richard just walked away from his food now he's eating Nancy's food let's see if I could swap it out I sprinkled a little bit more of the Fortiflora on his food because it has like a liver flavor feel like he's tasting the supplements and that's why he's moving out of it. All right, so maybe he'll go back and eat it. If anyone else eats it, it's fine. It's not going to be bad or anything. He had at least half of it, which is good. It's 10.30 a.m. There's Simba. He's in the cat tower on top of the armoire. And there are two cats under the bed. One of them is Splash. The other one is Richard. If Richard wants to stay under the bed, I'm fine with that, but I don't need fights. I don't need Richard getting into a fight because of his eye. So I lured Boo into his room with some freeze-dried chicken. And I think Stella is on a dining room chair because that's her go-to place uh, during the day now. She did that last week and I left her alone with all the other cats. Like I went out for hours at a time and she was fine with them. She just stays on the chair. She likes laying there. 
because I work at the table, so she feels like she's helping me by sitting on one of the chairs with me. So that's probably where she is. The other cats have the ability to come upstairs. I am going to shut the door to my room, though, so it'll be Richard, Simba, and Splash. Hopefully there will be no fighting. It's 10.45 a.m. And Nancy and Richard were crying for each other on opposite sides of my bedroom door because I had it shut. So I just let Richard out. So this is fine. Boo's in his room with the door shut. Simba and Splash are in my room with the door shut. I just put this toy on for them. And here's Stella. Hey, Stella. Look at Richard. It's like he's practicing for a circus act. He's balanced on top of that cat scratcher. There's Ringo and Richard. I'm coming down to give them some food. I was down here about a half hour ago and Richard's eye continues to look better. So if it was like 90% better yesterday, let's say today's like 95. Like it's not being held closed. It's not like tearing or oozing anything. And the pupil size is almost back to like a normal pupil size. If he still has some inflammation in his eye, then that could be what's causing the pupil to be a little bit smaller. But if you can you know, look at his eyes, you'll see it's almost back to the same size as the other pupil. Let's go downstairs. There's little Eva with the gecko video. I put it on for them when I was down here a little while ago. She loves this video. The only problem that I have with like this video or similar ones is that they try to get behind the TV or they'll climb on all the various shelves surrounding the TV and they've been knocking stuff off. They actually knocked a shelf off, like a whole shelf. I don't even know how they did that. Maybe someone got underneath it and pushed up, like the way the Sammy escaped from the trap that time. But one of the things I need to do is kind of go through all the stuff on the shelves. Every day I try to find a little bit of time to go through stuff, get rid of stuff, and kind of try to eliminate what is not needed anymore right Richard here's Richard look at his eye can you see it he's stretching so they all had a snack when I was down here they had some of the blue wilderness snacks I had to go upstairs and get a new battery for the camera these guys are so hard to film because they're always moving around Right, Ziggy? Right, Goldie? I'm just about to give them breakfast. Look at Sammy. She's laying on the shelf with the gecko.
It's 4 p.m. Look at what's going on here. So that's Ringo on the right. Richard in the middle. And Nancy on the left. They're so happy. Ringo loves laying in these cat towers in the afternoon. Usually Nancy and Richard are in the other room with me, but today they're here, which is fine. There are mouse videos on the TV, but they're relaxing instead of watching. That's okay. Stella's been helping me work. She's been sitting next to me helping me work. I have to go downstairs and get ready for the new freezer, which is arriving tomorrow. I just got my delivery window, which is between 10.45 and like 2 o'clock. So I'm going to see if I can move the freezer from where it is now, maybe put it in the back room for storage, and just make sure there's plenty of room for the new freezer. Here's Sammy. She's in this cat tower. It is raining today. Um, it's been raining most of the day. Actually, earlier today it wasn't, so I ran some errands early today. But then around 1 o'clock it started raining. It's been raining since. We're supposed to continue raining throughout the night, so I'm debating as to whether I want to go back out and get some more stuff done or just concentrate on doing stuff at home. I might just concentrate on, on cleaning some stuff out here. It is 10.39 p.m., and the cats just had their snack, and Stella's licking what's left of some squeeze-up. So um, they each had a squeeze-up, and then they had some of these Blue Wilderness cat treats. And that's their treat for tonight. There's Simba in a scratch and roll. There's Splash over there. And there's Boo watching TV. And I'm really excited because our new freezer is arriving tomorrow. I don't know what time exactly. I just have the delivery window. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, but it means I have to get up early um, just to give myself extra time to kind of organize and clean things and make sure that uh, there's plenty of space for the freezer to be delivered. I lost quite a bit of time today because I had to go to the dentist and it's just been a very busy week with regards to work and also that volunteer position that I've been dealing with. Um, just a lot of activity with that the past few days and I'm hoping that it's not going to last much longer as far as like all of the drama I'm dealing with regarding that but um, it could potentially be several more months so just taking things one day at a time with that and so that's what's going on today right now I want to start getting ready for bed and get a good night's sleep so that I'll be good and rested and Tomorrow's another day, right, Simba? It's 8 a.m. And Boo is hunting a gecko on the TV. It's 11.30 a.m. And there's little Eva. She's hanging out by the back door. I've been doing laundry this morning and cleaning up the kitchen, cleaning the bathroom, just doing cleaning while I'm waiting. Vacuum the house. And I opened some windows. So Nancy was meowing and meowing and meowing at me. And I was like, what do you want, Nancy? So I opened up a can of food, gave her some food, she didn't want it. So then she was trying to get into my bedroom and I have the door shut because I just don't need cat drama right now. So Splash and Simba are in my room, Boo's in his room, the doors are shut. And Nancy wanted to go in my room and I was like, oh, she probably smells the open window because you know, the fresh air is coming in. So all I had to do was open one of the living room windows a little bit and she was completely happy. And now we have little Eva rolling around by the back door. 
They're all going to freak out once the delivery people get here. I just don't want to start like a work project or anything and then have to stop in the middle of it for the delivery. That's why I'm just trying to do other things that I could easily be disturbed from. Right, Eva? And I just got a package in the mail of some supplements that I ordered. So I'm opening that up and I'm going to be putting that in the refrigerator. Just trying to get to little things that I haven't been getting to recently. This is one of the supplements that I ordered. It's Daily Multi Plus. And this is from the Pet Health and Nutrition Center. And I've bought this for the cats in the past, but I bought the smaller container. But this is a supplement that I add to their homemade raw food. Sometimes I'll add a homemade supplement mix, and sometimes I'll add this supplement mix. I like to kind of vary the supplement mixes that I use. And this is a really good mix. So um, I bought the bigger bag of it, so it'll last me a longer time. They say it is a proprietary blend that includes our digestive enzyme and probiotic formula, our multi-glandular blend, and the following USDA organic herbs. Nettle leaf, dandelion leaf, alfalfa leaf, ginkgo leaf, hawthorn berries, oat straw, astragalus root, ashwagandha root, burdock root, chia seed, broccoli sprouts, and barley grass juice powder. So those are all really nutritious herbs. And we have to remember that with cats, you don't want to include too much plant matter in their diet. You never want to include more than 5% plant matter in their diet. So this will get a lot of phytonutrients and prebiotics and probiotics into them. And it'll be a very small fraction of their food. And I also wanted to try their collagen supplement. It says it supports skin, hair, nail, and connective tissue health. So I bought this for a few reasons. Um, one is Boo's been itching again. So I don't know why he's itching. He doesn't have fleas. I've been combing him and there's no bugs on him. And I'm thinking maybe that this will help him with that issue. Um, you know, the cats do get fish oil and omega-3s, they get sardines and stuff like that. So uh, maybe by boosting some collagen in his diet, we could see an improvement. Also, Stella has been limping and it's been like an on and off limping kind of thing. It's not like a very bad limp, like sometimes she'll limp and then sometimes she doesn't limp. So um, I'm thinking maybe if she is having joint issues, this could help with that also. Um, in the past, in the past, Simba went through two phases where he was limping for a while, like he injured um, his leg. And I don't know if that's the same situation with Stella or if maybe she has some kind of like arthritis developing. But I thought um, this might be helpful. So that's why I decided to try this. I also got this bovine cartilage for the same reason for Stella and Boo. Provides natural nutrients to support the health of cartilage. And finally, I got this elk velvet antler. It provides natural nutrients to support the health of joint cartilage. So back when I had my calcific tendonitis in my shoulder, I was taking some herbal supplements for the joints. And one of the supplement blends that I was taking actually had elk velvet antler in it. When I saw this on the website, I thought, it would be a good idea to uh, try this also or just to have on hand in case of joint injuries. So that's why I got this. Here's Ringo. It's 11.40 a.m. and here's Ringo. And there's Sammy. I'm really looking forward to the new freezer arriving because just before it stopped working, I had established a really good system in the freezer. So like the top shelf was um, turkey based food. The next shelf was chicken based food. The third shelf was beef based food. Hey Ringo, here's Nancy. And the bottom shelf I wasn't using because I had a large turkey there. The reason why I had the turkey there is because it's so much cheaper to buy a turkey after the holidays because it was 99 cents a pound for a really high quality all natural turkey that would be 
four or five times the price um, before Thanksgiving. Um, not all stores do that, but one of the stores around here does that. Um, like the day after Thanksgiving, they put all the turkeys that they have left on like a clearance sale to get rid of them because they get fresh turkeys. And so what I do is I get the fresh turkey after Thanksgiving at, I mean, a fraction of the price and then I freeze it for later use. So I found that even if the turkey sits in my freezer for a whole year before it's cooked and eaten, the quality of it is still better than buying a frozen turkey. Because instead of buying it frozen, I'm buying it fresh, and then I'm freezing it. But this year, since that turkey was starting to defrost and it had to be eaten already, I'm going to have that bottom shelf to use for more cat food. So I could store four days worth of cat food on each shelf. So with the three shelves I was using, that's 12 days worth of cat food on those shelves. And with using the bottom shelf, that'll probably be another three or four days. So I'm gonna be able to store like a good two weeks worth of cat food in the freezer now, which will be nice. Also, sometimes I do store ingredients in there. So if I've gone through like half of the food in the freezer and there's a really good sale on, I don't know, like chicken drumsticks, 79 cents a pound. That's a recent sale that I've gotten. Then sometimes I will stock up on it. But I think what I like to do now, since I've gotten into a new system, is not stock up so much. But when I see a sale to purchase the product and then process it into food right away and then just store the processed food that's been working really well. Right, Boo? He's in his room today. He's enjoying relaxation, right, Boo? It is 10.15 p.m. Look at what's going on here. Look at these three. Splash, Simba, and Stella relaxing in the cat towers. I'm actually working right now. I am working so late tonight because I just want to get this project done and over with and behind me. I am scanning a ton of documents for this community service board of directors crap that I'm involved with. And I really just want to get it done put away and not have to deal with it ever again but um yeah so I have a lot more documents that I need to scan and digitize this evening and then I'm hoping I'm done with having to do that and I can move forward although I mean I'm still involved with the problems it's just I hope that this one aspect of them is is done Here's Nancy. I just heard Boo growling and hissing. That's why I came in the room to see what was going on. She was trying to get to Boo. It is 1.38 p.m. It is a beautiful sunny day. The first sunny day we've had in a while. And this is like my oasis right here. Here's Boo relaxing in his room. His room is so peaceful and calm. And I have been having a day from hell. So it ends up that the local association that I've been involved with and trying to clean up over the past few months has now become a state issue. So we've gone from local problem to state problem. And, you know, that's never a good thing. Um, so I've been having to respond to information requests and um, emails and it's just it's been a nightmare and I'm literally counting the days until I can get out of this situation um, I'm hoping it's less than 100 days from now that's what I'm really hoping uh, it could be a little bit longer than that but I've started a countdown and I feel bad for the cats because it's taking up so much of my time that I haven't been able to spend as much time with them as I would like to, especially with regards to, um, you know, doing more integration between the two families and uh, more training and stuff like that. So 
That's why Boo's in here. All the cats were together this morning and mingling. And what happened was um, Boo's favorite bunny video was on the TV. And he was, you know, right in front of the TV watching it. And then, like, Ziggy wanted to... I guess she wanted to interact with the video also, so she was trying to get near the TV, but Boo was not happy with that at all. So he was growling and hissing, and I was like, okay, he's all stressed out. I'm just going to bring him into his room, which is what I did. So now he's nice and calm and peaceful. I had to lure him in here with some freeze-dried chicken, and I had to open this front window just a little bit to keep Nancy and Richard from bothering me constantly because they want an open window. Oh, look at this. Look, there's Ringo and I think that's Ziggy. So there was actually, there was four cats by the window. I didn't even see two of them because of the way that light is shining. Here's Splash. There's Simba. Hey Simba. They have an open window in here. It's open a few inches. And here's Stella. She likes to hang out on this chair because I sit at this table and get my work done. And usually there are cats on the cat towers only a few feet away from her, but they're all in the other room right now because the window's open and she's just relaxing. And for the past few days, anytime that I've left the house, she stays here with the other cats so I don't have to like separate her in another room. I don't want to jinx anything, but it's been working out pretty well so far. It's 3 p.m. and look at what's going on here. There's Stella and Splash. They're laying on the couch together. So I just got home from running some errands. I've been gone for like three hours. And it's starting to rain. That's why I came back. And this is what's going on. So before I left, I was laying here on the sofa for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, just relaxing. And Stella came and she was laying on the sofa with me. And I guess once I left, Splash decided that he was going to join Stella. Also, I should mention that the Lucky Seven have been downstairs because I was away yesterday. So they were downstairs. And then this morning, I just left them downstairs because they were happy down there. They have their automatic feeder on. Nobody was trying to come up. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go out and I'll leave them down there. Everything will be fine. Well, what happened was... When I was unloading the car, because it's raining, I opened the door to the kitchen to bring some bags in and I had to go outside to get more bags. And I left the door to the kitchen open. I wasn't even thinking. And when I came in, um, I was walking around and I was like, oh, there's Ziggy and Nancy and Richard. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I left the door open by mistake. So, booze on my bed, Simba's on top of the armoire, and hopefully everyone will get along. I was hoping to give myself a little bit of a break today because, you know, the automatic feeders are set up with their dinner and, you know, everything is just really relaxed today. But as you can see, Stella and Splash are just kind of like watching somebody. But that's fine. 